bodies, motherfucker! <laughs> Lord have mercy, I am fully torqued and fully broke. Fucking Charlie never stood a chance. Boys, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not sure I've ever had an intro go so hard. Usually, I don't even watch my own shit because it's kind of cringe to watch yourself on camera, but that solid two and a half minutes right there has got me feeling a certain kind of way. Kings, I appreciate you being here and it is an honor to be in your presence. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the content, especially you guys in my DMs, big time mad about that sporterized World War I 1911. I love you, you are loved. Just breathe, I promise it's gonna be okay. So, gentlemen, the channel is growing at an exponential rate, but Kings, I ask upon you for a favor. Let's absolutely blow this thing up. Let's push this thing so hard until we get to 1 million subscribers. With your help dropping comments for the algorithm gods of YouTube, liking, subscribing, and sharing this allows us to continue to blow this thing up and continue to be the world's greatest BS tier gun tuber this side of the Mississippi. I appreciate your help and support. Also, special thanks to Alice and Chains for the song. Now, they don't know I'm using it, but that's okay. They'll be getting all the ad revenue off this video anyways for using it. So, Kings, the reason for this meeting of the crowns, the goddamned MF and M60, baby, Mod 4. One of the most prolific and successful crew-served machine guns of all time, with its service life spanning nearly seven decades across the globe. So, gentlemen, let's fucking get some and talk about our beloved transferable masterpiece, the M60. Now, would it surprise you to know that the actual M60 project started in the late 40s? Well, it definitely surprised me. The military sought out a lighter and more mobile, just more agronomical package from the M1919. So, with captured FG42s and MG42s from World War II Germany and some American ingenuity, Little Piggy was born. It was designated the T161E3. T161E3, and was set out to completely replace the bar in M1919 as the squad automatic weapon in medium machine gun roll. Come 1957, it was officially adopted as the M60. It's interesting because it's not like it was adopted without competition. There was a modified MG42 variant and something we all know of as today as the M240 Bravo's great great granddaddy, the FN Mag. Now at the time, guys, both the FN and the M60 were very new firearms and neither had any real combat experience behind them. So, push from Congress in order to cut costs and licensing fees, import fees from the FN Mag, the M60 was chosen over top of it. So, the M60 is a gas operated, belt fed, air cooled, open bolt machine gun. It's chambered in 7.62 NATO, or more commonly as we know it, 308. Now, the design itself isn't really all that bad, and it's kind of simplistic as well. It's even made of sheet metal construction, so it's faster and much cheaper to produce than the milling that it took for the M1919. The barrel is simple and quick to change, and was a considerable agronomical upgrade over the existing 1919 Browning. Rest in peace, hero. 
The design was actually rather similar to the FG42, meaning it's a semi bullpup kind of system. So essentially, most of the internals in action occupy the weapon stock at the rear. Even the op rod turning a rotating bolt inside was very much inspired by the German FG42. Can we just take a second and thank the Lord the FG42 and STG44 weren't fielded in place of the Car 98? Could you imagine the severe disadvantage literally every single army in terms of small arms firepower would have? Whew. Anyways, back to subject. The M60 knows only one way to go, and that's full motherfucking rock and roll, baby. Literally a weapon so fucking base that you either have completely safe, or that gat is screaming, I'm a peacock captain, you gotta let me fly. So, that's pretty neat. But what's nice about the M60 is the slower rate of fire. A very, very humble and respectable 550 to 600 rounds per minute. Now you may be thinking, the MG42, that had a rate of fire of like a bajillion, it was Hitler's bud saw, that was way more good, or well, not always. Guys, as a whole, a weapon that grunts can shoot with more manageable recoil, more manageable sustained rates of fire, less barrel changes, and doesn't chew through your assistant gunner's entire supply of ammo in the first five minutes of a firefight, well, they decided that's pretty dang cool, the military said. Not to mention, as a whole, you can do much more conservative and accurate bursts by keeping the volume of fire down and keeping that recoil to a minimum. You better believe bullets that don't hit the exact mark is still changing the bad guy's attitude on the receiving end. And oftentimes, guys, that's the sole purpose of a squad automatic weapon. Changing the booger's attitude by keeping their head down and giving your guys space to breathe while maneuver and neutralizing the threat or flushing them out into the open where your boys can just do their thing. Accurate shots that go exactly where you want them to go will always be an entire belt that's everywhere but harassing the boogers on the receiving end. The rate of fire is so slow that it's actually really easy just to milk that trigger and pop single shots off. However, it's going to be most effective in bursts of like three to five rounds. Now, as stated before, around the time the M60 entered the service in the late 50s, the German MG3, the FN Mag weren't in full scale production and they definitely weren't being used on a wide scale, especially no time in combat. So for the time being, the M60 seemed like a reasonable and okay update and replacement for the 1919. In army tests, it actually did fairly well. However, gentlemen, when we got to the jungles of Southeast Asia, a little place called Vietnam, you might have heard of that little war we had there, its weaknesses, well, they started to show. So lots of troops complained. The weapon was just poorly balanced, and that semi bullpup design, it was just a pain to hump around the jungle because it was so poorly balanced. However, the most detrimental complications came from its own design paired with that harsh jungle environment. At times, it was extremely unreliable and very prone to failures, especially during heavy strings of fire, and especially worse when it was just a little bit dirty. Sometimes spent cases would fail to extract and get stuck in the chamber, which means either a cleaning rod needs to go down the pipe to eject it or open the cover pick it out with a knife or a tool, or the most common fix, replacing the barrel. That was usually faster than diagnosing a failure and fixing it, well, while being shot at. Now, due to the barrel's rotating bolt design, filing burrs and whatnot would sometimes increase the headspace. Headspace and timing, you guys have probably heard of that, which would occasionally cause case head separation, which means you're going to have to replace the bolt and probably the barrel until you have time to unfuck your weapon system. While that's not exclusive to the M60, it definitely was very prevalent. Another thing that's not exclusive to the M60 is the big barrel latch mechanism that you use to take on and off the barrel. It would sometimes get caught up on the environment, your kit, and accidentally, well, ejecting your barrel into the mud. They eventually changed this, but not until later variants, and most of the original M60s were never retrofitted or modified for this. In Vietnam, that's what they had. The grip housing which contains the trigger, kind of an important part, was held in by a pretty fragile leaf spring kind of clip thing that was legitimately known since its birth as an issue. But most GIs would simply just rig up wire, paracord, and a little bit of good old fashioned 100 mile an hour tape to help with that. Runaway guns as well weren't terribly uncommon as the trigger sear when it would wear down over time with no extra safety measure to prevent it would just send guns running away. Eventually they did add a second notch to the sear to help stop this in that event. Now this doesn't mean the weapon was a complete hunk of junk just yet but it didn't exactly have the best reputation either. So 
Instead of dumping it completely for an entirely new platform, a newer, improved, and lighter variant was made, the M60E3. This was adopted in the 80s. It boasted tons of new improvements to the platform, or so they said. By shaving a few pounds off, they sacrificed the durability of the barrel for sustained fire engagements, meaning it simply would just get too hot too fast and the gun would be unusable. Also, the internals, they wore down faster by using lighter materials. Now, by this time, we started to see the M249 saw coming about, which is arguably an upgrade, but also has a little bit of spotty reputation for reliability, and it's a 5.56 gun. It has a higher rate of fire, but it's the 5.56 pill, so it doesn't have that stopping power. So, uh, another big L for the pig. It was actually so bad that in January 1944, the Army started trials for a new and improved medium machine gun all over again because of the M60's failures. And the M60E3 and the M240 were the only ones that showed up to play in these trials. And you'll never guess who won. It was actually a pretty big L for the old pig. 18 of each guns were tested for nearly two years. Performance was mostly measured in mean rounds before stoppages and mean rounds before failures. 50,000 rounds were fired through each gun. The results, well, they were pretty devastating to say the least. The M60, it had a mean of 846 rounds before stoppage versus the 240 that had just under 3,000 rounds before stoppages at 2,962. The M60, it had an average of one point of failure every 1,669 rounds versus the 240 that had an outstanding 6,442 rounds before failure. So it was a landslide win for the 240 Bravo and it began to take its place. But old Piglet said, yo, I didn't hear no bell yet. And the US military and its infinite wisdom and in keeping awful platforms alive. I'm talking to you, M14. The Dundang did it again. And now we have the M60E4. This is like late 90s, early 2000s. Just like you see here today. Well, kind of, we'll get to that. The M60E4 is the primary LMG of many NATO countries today. And the Danish love it so much, they done damn made themselves an E6 variant. So what you see here being the E4 looks very similar to the E3. However, most of the upgrades were under the hood and some cosmetic differences like Picatinny rail slots. Improved internals drastically changed its reputation for poor reliability and also gave it a new life once again, finding itself again on the front lines in combat, in particular, the Mark 43 Mod 0 and Mod 1. Now guys, the Mod 1 is most similar to what you see here. Now the M60E4 and the Mark 43 are pretty much identical. However, one has a shorter barrel, the Mark 43, to be more compact and take on more of like an assault role versus a traditional crew served weapon, although still utilized as such. Ammo is held by an external box that's actually mounted to the receiver for additional reliability and ease of use, which is definitely a quality of life improvement. And it can absolutely be manned and entirely operated by a single person versus the traditional two to three man gun teams with the assistant gunner, an old boy carrying the tripod or bipod. Now this variant that you see here is most notably used by the US Navy SEALs well into the mid 2000s, meaning it definitely saw some use into the global war on terror. Ultimately, as of now, it's being phased out and replaced and I believe for good this time, by the Mark 48, which is a 7.62 M249 saw variant. So I guess even ultimately the Navy SEALs, they said, well, guys, it's time to finally put it to bed. Ultimately, the odd and just unwilling to die story of the pig is quite an interesting one. Troubling reliability pretty much in every single variant had plagued the old hoss since its birth. Back in 1959, when the US adopted the M60, guys, they could have gone with the FN Mag, which is the granddaddy of the current 240 Bravo, which is praised by being one of the best belt feds America has ever fielded and ultimately kind of across the world. But guys, politics and wanting to save money gave us the pig. And today, I believe we finally took it to the butcher and made it into bacon. So gentlemen, that's a wrap on the M60E4 Mark 43 Mod 1. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys are enjoying the channel, be sure to do us a favor and help us blow this thing up into something huge. Let's not stop until we hit 1 million subscribers. We are on a roll, let's not stop it here. And with your guys' help of dropping comments for the algorithm gods, liking and sharing, I believe we'll be there in no time. Until next time, Kings, run your gun and not your mouth. Welcome to the rice patties, motherfucker! <laughs> Welcome to the rice fields, motherfucker! Damn it.